Well, this week was quite a week here. If you were on campus with 450 kids. Kids, you had a good time, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, kind of looked like it from my perspective. Well, it was an amazing week, and kids are here with us at Sit Together Sunday. And so, kids, I thought you could help me out here as we get started to help everybody else here learn a little bit about your Bible buddies and the Bible point they told you. See, every week there is a Bible buddy, and it teaches the kid a particular Bible point. So, kids, I'm going to have you shout out who this character is, and then I'm going to Mind us what he taught you. So who's this first one up? Climber. Climber. And Climber says God has the power to? Yes, from 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God will generously provide all you need. Now who's this one? Cliff. Cliff, that's right. Cliff says God has the power to? Comfort, 2 Corinthians 1, 4, he comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. Now, who's this one? Mallory. Mallory. And Mallory says, God has the power to? Heal. Heal, yes. Psalm 147, verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages up their wounds. All right, now who's this? Pike, yes. Pike says God has the power to forgive. forgive. And that comes from Nehemiah 9, 17. You are a God of forgiveness. Now this is our last one. Who's this? Yeti. Yes, and Yeti says God has the power to forever. That's right. Love us forever. And it, verse is John 3, 4. 15, everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Thanks, guys, for helping me out and teaching folks. They even have a Bible app, folks, you can put on your phone. You hold it up to those, those key things the kids got, and the little Bible buddy, he talks to you and tells you the Bible point. It's amazing. It's amazing. But this past week, God showed up in so many different ways. And our kids learned how God's power can conquer life's challenges and, and how it can help us climb the mountains of life. For God provides, God comforts, God heals, forgives, and loves. Did I get all five of those right, kids? I think I did. Well, you know what? When I was in college, I had a friend who loved to climb mountains. I mean, the big kind of mountains. He had a dream of climbing Mount Empress, but I remember he had a goal. And the goal was to climb the highest mountain in every single state. Now, he might have gotten to that goal by now. Um, I think he's just got a few left. But I remember his joy and his, his excitement as he headed out and prepared to plan for that mountain. And as I thought about his joy and his excitement, I thought, better he than me. Yeah, those mountains are big, and you know what it takes to get ready to climb one of those mountains? I mean, when I saw the sacrifice and the training and the exercise it took, I thought, you know what, I am much better down at base camp taking pictures and cheering him on than climbing those mountains. But in listening to his stories, I learned a little bit about mountain climbing. And you know, as I watched the kids this past week, and we spent time right here in this place with 450 of them as what we called base camp, and we worshiped together. I realized that in mountain climbing, you know, mountain climbing is almost always done with other people. I mean, they help each other out to reach the summit. You rarely see it done alone. And our passion today, our passage today in Romans, it speaks about how we come together. We come together to, to work in community and how God's mighty power can work in and through us. And it's interesting because Paul writes a similar message to the church of Ephesus as well as to the church of Corinth. And he uses a very similar description as we heard about today. There's this diversity in the way in which they use their gifts. And there's also this, this spirit of unity 
as they express their love for God and as they live out this, this life of faith together. And you know, it reminded me that in all of my life, both the dreams and the challenges of my life, God's power has been with me. But almost always, almost always, God has used other people to help me climb the mountains of life. Has that ever happened with you? Have you, have you recognized that? It's almost always through other people that God has provided, comforted, healed, restored, loved. And I think that's why through Scripture, God never gives up on creating community. It's so that, that through other people, God's power can heal and transform and love this world. So, without uh, eisegeting the text too much, I thought we would take a look at mountain climbing, what the kids learned, and this passage from Paul, and just see if there might be something for us when we look at what it looks like to be the community of faith, and thought I'd just share where my spirit landed this week. But the first one, the first thing that I noticed about mountain climbing is that you got to be ready and willing to surrender to the mountain. Because that mountain is big. And it's bigger than you. I mean, think about it. They're big and they're beautiful. They're majestic. And there's all of this wonder and adventure in it. But there's also uncertainty. There's unpredictability with the ice and the cold and unseen obstacles. And so when we climb a mountain, we got to surrender to that which is bigger than ourselves. I think we find that true in our life of faith, don't we? There was an article written um, that I read this week, and in it, the woman said that Mother Teresa wrote this about surrender. Hear these words. Total surrender to God must come in small details as it comes in big details. It's nothing but a single word. Yes, I accept whatever you give me, and I give whatever you take. And this is just a simple way for us to be holy, she says. We must not create difficulties in our own minds. To be holy doesn't mean to do extraordinary things, to understand big things. But it's a simple acceptance because I have given myself to God because I belong to him. This is my total surrender. Now hear these words that Paul gave us as Jess read them today. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you might discern God's will, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, I don't know about you, Sacrifice and surrender, those can sometimes be a challenge for me. I mean, I like to get in there and fix it and do it myself, right? I can grab a hold and take control of something. Have you ever noticed how easy it is for the ego to distract us, to, to pull us away from the beauty and all the possibility of the summit, miss out on what's good and perfect in the sight of God? Paul invites us, invites us as the community of faith into alignment with God. He, he says, remember, you belong to me. Therefore, offer yourself, your body, your mind, and your spirit to me. And be transformed. By the renewing of your minds, think about those things to discern God's will. Fix your eyes, fix your mind on that which is good and acceptable and perfect. I mean, God wants to work in and through us. But the truth is, we got to make room for God to enter. And so we have to surrender too. Surrender to that which is bigger and greater than all of us. Now, the second thing I noticed about climbing mountains is they have to train. The soon to be mountain climber and my friend taught me that you got to find a really good guide. 
you got to make your plans for the trip. you got to train your body, your mind, get yourself all ready. you got to get all the right tools together for the trip. Now, kids, I want to ask you this question because I saw a lot of this stuff around. If you were having to climb a mountain, what were some of the things you would need to get to climb a mountain? What are some of the tools? Rope. A jacket. What was that? Boots. You got a tent. You got a lantern. You had an ice pick. There was a whole bunch of stuff here, wasn't there? Yeah, there are some good. See, look at all of these supplies we need. Well, you know what? Water. All right, see, that list could go on, couldn't it? Well, you know what? When we're being the church, when we're working together in the body of Christ, we need tools too, don't we? We need tools to, to train up, to be all that God's created us to be. And so, Paul gives us in this scripture a little bit of picture of what some of those tools might look like. And those tools come in gifts that we're given. Paul says, for as in one body we're members... Not all members have the same function, so we who are mem many are one body in Christ. Individually, we are members one of the other, and we have gifts, gifts that differ according to the grace that's given to us. Just like the different tools we need to climb mountains, we all have different gifts, we have different skills, we have different talents, and we're meant to develop them, to discover them, so that we can climb the mountains and live into the dreams the challenge of what it means to be the kingdom of God on earth. It's so exciting for me to watch when somebody discovers their divine potential, whether it's a gift, a talent, a skill, and they take it and they allow God's grace to, to fill them up and then they begin to share it. it it's like that person and Christ come together in that moment. And oftentimes it can be in the simplest, most non-public ways. This last week I saw it all over this campus and one of them was uh, this picture. Do you have the picture of what I saw the morning I ran up those stairs there to watch worship? This is what I saw. See all those green shirts? Those are teenagers. Those are teenagers that volunteered their time. They came together. They trained, they learned, and they used their gifts. And in the using of their gifts, 450 children came in this place and were able to worship God. You see, when it comes to mountain climbing, you can surrender to the mountain and you can learn and train, but at some point, you gotta start climbing. I mean, at some point, you get up into the booth and you start running the sound machines up there. You know, when we start serving and we start climbing, we become then the hands and feet of Christ, both, both for ourselves and for others. This past week, we got to see it in men and, and women and kids and adults who served and used their gifts. But the thing is, we get to see that here week to week, through all of you. When we come together week to week to be the body of Christ in this place, people are willing to use their gifts, unleash them and let God's love be made real in this community and out into the world. So those outside the faith community, they may ask the question, you know, at the end of the day, why do you serve? You know, why discover your gifts and use them? I mean, especially when it's really inconvenient. You know, like on a Saturday or a Sunday. You know, I think we do this because we have surrendered to something that's greater than ourselves. I mean, we've surrendered and we've responded to a love that is so great that only our sovereign God can give us. I mean, God sent us Christ to heal our brokenness, all the broken, the hurt, the pain, the sin. God healed all of that within us through Christ to restore us back, back to our created and loved selves. You see, there's a destiny for you and for me. We've all got something to give. 
God gives us all gifts, and we can offer ourselves up together. And when we do, then we experience something greater than ourselves simply by giving to others. In your bulletin today, you've got a, what we call a explore serving card. And in the next several months, we're going to be getting ready for August. Because in August, there are going to be kids and children, but there's also going to be adults that are going to be returning back from summer break. And there's also some big dreams coming up. We got some big dreams and mountains we would love to climb, like reaching out into our community or going downtown or working with the marginalized or those that are most challenged in our society. But those dreams, they're going to need the hands and feet of Christ to make them real. They're going to need yours. And so if there's a place that you'd like some more information about serving, some place you'd like to talk to somebody about how you might use your gift, I just want to invite you to check that off and place it in the offering plate. Somebody will get with you over the next couple of weeks as we begin to prepare for what it looks like in August to start making God's love real in some amazing and powerful ways. You see, whether you work with kids or youth, or maybe whether you deliver a meal to a home, visit somebody in the hospital, or enter data on Sunday mornings, you see, we all together, we're all a part of passing on this message of faith and hope and love to our children, to our community, and to the world. And so regardless of our age, we can choose to surrender. We can choose to train and start climbing into this kingdom on earth. I mean, Jesus said, my kingdom come, my will be done. Well, maybe today... You're ready to take that next step and what that means for you. We are all of us God's children. And we can all learn together and serve together and worship together. And you know, when we do, well then we pass on this life of faith. We gain strength for our own journey. And we're able to access the power of God that helps us climb all of those mountains that we experience in our own lives. This past week, our worship leader, Brent, shared with me a song that he wrote for his daughter, Sophie. He wrote it when she was born, and it expressed how he felt as a parent. And as I listened to these words, I thought how... They were words we would want to say to all of our children, but then it made me realize, you know what? I think these words aren't just meant for our children. I, I think they're meant for us too. I've asked him to come and, and invite him to come up and he and Sophie to come on up. I asked him to come and play during our offering time together. And I want you to hear these words, these words that really jumped out at me from this song says, another child was born for your kingdom today. And it just so happens that she shares my name. I'll teach her to grow and I'll teach her to serve. I'll teach her that she is loved. And one day she'll find out for herself what you made her capable of. You see, kids, here's the thing. We adults sometimes forget that the words we tell you about how much God loves you and how you need created into God's image you are, well, we sometimes forget that those words we tell you are also meant for us too. You see, we get caught up in the busyness of life and we get distracted. And we forget that those words of love, parents, adults, grown-ups, teenagers, they're meant for you. We all are God's children. God loves us. God sees the precious child that lives in and through each one of us. And so as the ushers come forward and take up our offering, I invite you to sit and hear these words of love written for a precious child. And may you remember how precious you all are in the eyes of God.